The Only Good Orc by Sandy Mitchell There's never a good time to come face to face with an orc, but doing so while crawling from the wreck of a crashed salamander is one of the least papituous. What made the surprise even less welcome was that, until that moment, I had no idea that any of the creatures were even in the area at all. I suppose I shouldn't have been completely taken aback. Mentia had been infested with them a few decades prior to the experience. Until the guard had arrived to clear them out, a job they had performed with commendable efficiency. But as always, there had been an occasional localized outbreak in the years since, which the Fermentian militia had been more than capable of mopping up. But at least until they turned out to be infested with gene stealers, turned one another, and then they sparked a full scale civil war against each other, which the Ostra Militarum had been sent back in to deal with. I'd been dragged into the whole Dinsmill affair, despite being officially retired by then, by virtue of passing through the void station that the task force was assembling around at just the wrong moment, refusing to tag along at the Lord General's personal request, would have put more of a dent in my undeserved but undeniably useful on occasion reputation than I could afford. Not to mention our personal friendship. And then there was Amber Lee in my concealed activation as one of her inquisitorial errand boys. Unsuspected gene stealer infestation on such a scale was sure to be of interest to the Odo Zenos, which meant in turn that she was liable to be a bit miffled with me if I passed up a chance to acquire some intelligence on the spot. A complication of my life could well have done without. So, with carefully concealed reluctance, I let my waiting sincere on Prelilia slide still further into the indefinite future, and embarked for an unremarkable agri-world little different to a score of others. On arrival, I attached myself to the general staff, made sure my successor wasn't being too much of a nuisance to Zeven, which she wasn't, as I'd made sure the commissariat would appoint someone pragmatic enough to just let him get on with the job before I left, and busied myself making morale-boosting visits to whichever regiment seemed sufficiently far away from the fighting at the moment, that is, picking up whatever scraps of information I could for Amber Lee along the way, which was how I eventually found myself in the cascades of an area of high peaks, deep gorges, and spectacular waterfalls, which had been a popular tourist destination away from the intensely civilized zones, in more peaceful times, that is. Many of the Jean Stilicotas, retreating in the face of the guard advance, had sought refuge here, counting on the rugged terrain and sparse population to let them effectively disappear. It might even have worked in the narrow, twisty roads over the mountain passes hadn't funneled their vehicles into a limited number of transit corridors, making them sitting waterfowl for our air corps. Vendetta gunships. I just finished a typical visit to one of the forward airstrips, where I dispensed a few platitudes, shaken a few hands, and enjoyed an indifferent lunch. When we drove in into an ambush, presumably set for the supply trucks which kept the flyboys fed. My first intonation of trouble was a las bolt, which impacted on the rim of the salamander's open passenger compartment, followed by a number of others as I ducked behind the comforting solidity of the armor plate. Jürgen, my vox tapping the comm bead in my ear. We're taking fire. Not that I was particularly concerned. The sturdy little scout vehicle could shrug off a great deal worse than that, and had probably come as a nasty surprise to the insurgents, who'd no doubt been expecting nothing tougher than a lorry or two that they could dis disable and loot. I scrambled behind the pinto-mounted heavy bolter, which afforded me some protection as I stood, and pulled the trigger, closing down the cliff face from which, judging by the angle of the incoming fire, 
The bulk of it had come. I was rewarded with a sudden secession of the rain of las boats, and a few flickers of movement among the scrub cleaning, hopefully, to the near vertical surface as our assailants scrambled for something more solid to hide behind. I seemed to have dampened their enthusiasm. Please to hear it, sir. My aide responded from the driver's compartment, opening the throttle as he spoke. If anyone else had been at the controls and had found the sudden surge of acceleration distinctly alarming, given that our left-hand tread was mere centimeters from the precipice edging the highway. But I knew Jürgen's exponential driving skills of old, and merely tightened my grip on the bolter a little to help maintain my balance. A reflex which might well have saved my life. I just had time to register a bright streak in the air ahead of us before a rocket hit the corner of our front armor plate, shredding one of the tracks with the resulting shower of shrapnel. The salamander lurched violently. Jürgen swore, or began to. His oath choked off half finished, as the sturdy little vehicle veered over the cliff edge. Fortunately, as I've mentioned before, there was a fair amount of scrub, even a tree or two, clinging to the face of the gorge. And, by the grace of the Emperor, the cliff face here wasn't quite vertical. After a heart-stopping moment in which we seemed to be suspended in mid-air, the breath was driven by my lungs by a bone-jarring impact, and our crippled salamander began slithering down the scree. Rocks and shattered vegetation sprayed all out around us. I clung to the bolter for dear life, my teeth rattling in my head, while the sky and the rocks around us pinwheeled. Then, with a jolt, a bounce, and a squeal of abused metal, the entire vehicle tilted over the edge on one side, and the last came to a rest, a few meters from the stream running energetically along the floor of the gorge. After a moment, I realized I wasn't dead, after all, and crawled out from under the bolter mounting. Bumping my head on the way, still dazed, I rolled off the armor floor, which, until recently, had been the salamander's side plates, feeling gravel and a few larger, harder stones pressing against my back. I looked up into a face that more properly belonged in a nightmare. Indeed, for a moment, I thought that was precisely what it was hallucination shaken up by my scrambled cortex by the violence of our descent and I realized that no figment of my imagination could possibly have exuded breath as fluctuant as that <gasps> it bellowed punching a dent in the armor plate behind me as I rolled out of the way in the nick of time scrambling for my last pistol as I moved my hand closed on nothing at all the precise distance above an empty holster that the grip should have been. And I rolled again, evading another killing blow, catching sight of the weapon just under the heavy bolter mount, where I couldn't scramble for it without getting my skull stove in from behind. In the process, a loud clanging from the distorted hatch of the driver's compartment accompanied by a litany of profanity in my earpiece made it abundantly clear that I wasn't going to get any help from Jürgen in the next few seconds. I was on my own. At least until he managed to force the damned thing open. Fortunately, I still had my chainsaw. I drew it, scrambling to my feet while my orcish assailant remained un unbalanced from the failure to connect. Before I could take a swipe at him, however, a fuselage of lasgun fire burst around us, spanging from the mangled metalwork of the salamander, and galling a couple of wounds in my attacker, which would have put a human down in an instant, probably for good. It simply seemed to enrage him, however, as he whirled around to face his new threat, with an even louder bellow of defiance than ever. What's happening, sir? Jürgen asked, hardly surprisingly under the circumstances. Well, I dived for cover of the overturned passenger compartment, taking the opportunity to grab my last pistol while the orc's attention was diverted. Rebels, I said, taking in the situation with a rapid glance, a squad of troopers advancing up the 
Defile were wearing local militia uniforms, but by now I'd seen enough gene stealer hybrids to notice the subtle wrongness about the way a few of their numbers carried themselves. Emboldened by the presence of the survivors of their ambushing party on the road above, sent a few las rounds in our dust direction too. But what with the extreme range and awkward angle they might just as well not have bothered? All the couple of bolts that actually hit the crippled vehicle did was reinforce my inclination to stay put, which, with an angry orc practically in punching distance, wasn't really much of an option. Be right with you, sir, my aide assured me, while the banging and swearing from the driver's compartment both increased in volume. The orc turned back to me, murder in his eyes, and I brought the last pistol up, hoping I'd be able to find a weak spot, a weak spot in the thick skull of the orc. And another possibility occurred to me. Hold it! I bellowed as loud as I could, keeping the pistol on aim in case he didn't. But the results were successful, as I could have hoped for. An expression of almost comedic confusion had been addressed in his own barbarous tongue. Furrowed his bestial visage, I gestured at the advancing hybrids who were considerate enough to draw his attention to them with another burst of automatic fire, which ricocheted around us fortunately creating more noise and damage in the process. We kill them first, then each other. The orc furled for a moment, trying to work it out. Then to my intense relief, he threw back his head in... to emit a harsh bark of laughter. Kill them first. <laughs> kill them first, he agreed. And his eyes fell on the heavy bolter. Shooter! Uh, help yourself, I said, wondering whether handing an enemy our most powerful weapon was an alt altogether wise. On the other hand, I couldn't use it whereas, where it was, firmly attached to the salamander, and right this minute, the gene stealer brood seemed the greater threat. Marginally, come to that. I'd never seen an orc without a weapon of some kind before, or on his own. That worried me. Time enough to think about that later, though. If I got the chance. A fist large enough to have crushed my head seized the heavy weapon and wrenched it from its mounting with a groan of protesting metal. Hardened steel twisted and tore, and I found myself once again marveling at the sheer brute strength of these creatures. The orc hefted the heavy boulder with an unmistakable expression of satisfaction fumbled for the trigger and emitted a frustrated grunt as his ploying thick forefinger proved too bulky to fit through the trigger guard. With an irritated exclamation, he pinched a thin strip of metal between his finger and thumb and pulled it away, like Jürgen disposing of his scab. His gaze fell on me, and I had to confess to a shiver of apprehension, which I conceded as best as I could, flourishing my own weapons and glancing in his direction of the oncoming enemy. Kill them first, he bellowed, taking a hit. And to my immense relief, he lumbered off in the general direction, brandishing the bolter. A moment later, he leveled it, and a withering blast of explosive projectiles made a satisfying mess of the first few hybrid troopers, while the rest scattered, no doubt unpleasantly surprised by this sudden turn of events. Taking advantage for the distraction of both sets of enemies, I turned back to the crippled vehicle behind me. Move away from the hatch! I vox Jürgen, thumbing the speed selector of my chainsaw to maximum, and beginning to hack the hinges. Thankfully, they gave way almost immediately. In a shower of sparks, and the circular slab of metal fell away with a clang that echoed around the narrow valley. My aide emerged, cocooned in the odor of month-old socks, clenching his last gun and looking around wearily. Who's firing the bolter? He asked, flicking the safety off. And who at? An orc, I said, deciding to keep things as simple as possible. And some hybrids. This way, where they keep each other busy. 
I started to lead the way along the edge of the stream, keeping the bulk of the wrecked settlement between us and the combatants. The hybrids were returning to the were returning the green skin's fiber now, from whatever cover they had been able to find. With any luck, they'd take care of each other while we made ourselves scarce. I suppose anyone else could have responded to the statement like that with a stream of questions. But Jürgen, phlegmatic as ever, simply shrugged and fell in my shoulder as usual. His last gun readied for use. Knew I should have brought the melter, he said, spitting ruefully into the stream. This sector was supposed to be clear, I reminded him. This is no time to get distracted with pointless reproaches. I can see I'll have to have a little word with our analysis team when we get back. If we got back. But that was a line of thought I had no wish to pursue, and in all honesty I could hardly blame anyone else for the, our predicament. We wouldn't have been out here on our own at all, if and I had thought there were a remote chance of blundering into the enemy. Just our luck to stumble across a handful of stragglers. So where did the orc come from? Jürgen asked as he rounded the curve of the stream bed, which revealed a wider section of the gorge. There's a small shingle beach here, the walls of the defile covered in vegetation, but the only thing which registered with me was the scattering of dead orcs decorating it. All had been killed with imperial ordinance, and a gratifying degree of thoroughness, judging by the miasma of greasy smoke hanging over everything, and the charred condition of most of the corpses. Someone had doused the dead in Prometheum and set fire to them. A detail which left Jürgen nodding in satisfaction. Here would be my guess, I said, glancing around for any more which might still be twitching. In my experience, it was never wise to count any of the creatures out entirely. However chewed up they were, the resilience bordering on the supernatural... But I didn't have to be worried. These were dead as they looked. A fact I verified as simply as possible by putting a couple of las bolts into each of them from a safe distance. Looks like they'd set up camp here. Not there was much evidence on that left. Beyond a crude fire pit formed from some of the larger rocks, in which the remains of a fire still smoldered. Jürgen nodded in agreement. That looks like a den, he said, pointing to a tangle of brushwood piled up next to the cliff face. As I took a few more steps towards it, I saw what he meant. The branches had been laced together to form a crude shelter, which, judging by the smell emanating from it, had been in use for some time. A primitive spear formed from a sapling, a chipped rock lashed to its tip lay on the ground nearby, and I prodded it with my foot, feeling somewhat bemused. Where's their kit? I asked. My aide shrugged. We're walking on it. He stirred the shale underfoot with the tip of his boot, and I blatantly recognized the flakes as the ditches left by the creation of stone tools. These must be recently spawned. You know, I said, deferring to his greater knowledge of the creatures, honed over the generations of keeping his home world free of any further infestations. The distinct sound of bolt of fire drifted towards us on the breeze, indicating that my erstwhile companion was still enjoying himself, but he was probably running out of gene sealed hybrids to shoot, and would no doubt be turning his attention to us before much longer by which time I fully intended to be long away from here, lurking in ambush, or both. I'd seen what a heavy bolter could do so f far too frequently to have any indication, indication of being on the wrong end of one. Or last guns, come to that. An unmistakable crackle of several bursts echoed around the defile, and one of the stones by my boot burst from the sudden thermal shock of a last bolt hit. More of the gene sealed hybrids were charging at us from further up the defile, firing as they came. Wild, unaimed bursts intended to pin us in position 
Well, they closed to force us to run so they could shoot us in the back. <laughs> A crude tactic that might possibly have worked against a local loyalist. But Jürgen and I had been on far too many battlefields to make either mistake. Throwing ourselves prone against the nearest smoking greenskin corpse instead, which smelled about as pleasant as you might imagine. The least it mastered me, but my aid's distinctive aroma and soaked up the bulk of the incoming fire perfectly satisfactory. Pick your targets, I cautioned quite unnecessarily, given the decades Jürgen and I have served together. But my aide nodded and began placing precise single shots among the onrushing hybrids, dropping the lead one with a neat hit between the fellow's torso, armor, and helmet. A cauterized crater replaced most of his face, and he fell forwards into the stream, raising a cloud of spray. Let them waste their ammo, Jürgen agreed as several of the troopers switched to full auto, chewing away determinately at the orc corpse behind which we were sheltering. Flackwits! They're trying to keep our heads down, I said, apprehending the danger just in time, and turning to shoot at another hybrid rappling down the cliff face, his last gun slung over his shoulder. But the ones from the road flank us! I missed him, of course, given the range and the angle. But the last bolt struck close, and he lost his grip on the rope, falling the last few meters. That wasn't enough to finish him off, but his leg must have been broken, because he flapped about like a recently landed fish, until Jürgen administrated the coupe de gras, which another precisely aimed shot. Well, this exceeding, my aide muttered abandoning his las gun for a moment while he fumbled in his collection of webbing pouches and produced a grenade. This ought to return the favor. He lobbed it over our reeking makeshift barricade, following up with a couple of others. The first detonated in the middle of the squad, attempting to pin us down, shredding a couple of the nearest troopers with its spray of shrapnel, and sending the rest scattering left and right in intensive scramble to get away from the sight of the explosion. Right where Jürgen had placed the other two frag charges, of course, which went off almost simultaneously a second or two later, wrecking similar havoc among the injured and shell shock survivors. Not all the tainted squad were down, but the majority were, and I felt a degree of vindictive satisfaction as a realization that most of the survivors were limping, <laughs> Nicely done, I said, potting one of the nearer walking wounded for good measure, and turning my attention to the latest threat. Not that the handful of remaining hybrids from the first squad could be counted out, of course. Their connection to the brood mine kept them focused on the objective long after most human troopers would have retreated to regroup, or simply fled for their lives but at least they stopped shooting at us for the time being. Which reminded me, the distinct sounds of bolt of fire had ceased. Either the orc had been killed or he ran out of ammunition. Either way, that would be a problem for later. I glanced at the enemy gathering by the cliff face, their boots crunching on the rocky breach as they shrugged free of the rappling lines. A potential way back up the road. And help if we could reach them. The airstrip we'd left so short time before was only a few kilometers away, and Jürgen and I could walk in... walk it in over an hour or so. But, with any luck. Someone would have noticed we were missing before then, and sent out a search party. We could hitch a ride with. Right now, though, I might as well wish for the Emperor himself to turn up and offer us a hand. The dangling ropes and the arduous climb they promise were well out of reach, cut off from us by the horde of well-armed human-looking abominations. The battered survivors on the other squad were joining them, and I counted a dozen or so enemy troopers in total. Got any more of those grenades? I asked, and Jürgen nodded somberly. Two more frag, and a couple crack ones, 
which might have been some use if the enemy had a vehicle, but we both knew the armor-piercing charges would be pretty much useless against dispersed infantry, other than startling them with an unexpectedly loud bang. Then Fragates, I said, eyeing the next dead orc on our left, which seemed to offer a bit more cover against the new direction the enemy advanced than our rapidly decaying current refuge. Better make them count. I will that. My aide followed the direction of my gaze, reading the situation just as clearly as I was. That one there. That one there, I confirmed. On three. I took careful aim at the cultists with the sergeant rank insignia. They were all part of the brood mine, so taking out the nominal leader wouldn't actually make a blind bit of difference. But I couldn't see any point in overriding my normal targeting priorities and pulled the trigger. Three! And shot was a good one, taking him squarely in the chest. I couldn't see if I had penetrated his torso armor from this distance, but I don't suppose it actually mattered. He staggered from the impact and Jürgen and I moved, running for the next cadaver. Crouching low to minimize our profiles and popping off a few rounds in the general direction of the enemy, a few delusionally bolt las bolts followed us in return. But by the grace of the throne, none came close enough to actually hit. I threw myself down behind the sheltering corpse, driving the breath from my lungs against the hard-edged stones, briefly envying the, my aid for his body armor. An instant before the hybrids found the range again, and the dead orc twitched as though disturbed by dreams as half a dozen lasbolts slammed into it. Oh no you don't! Jürgen snapped off a dozen tap, and one of the figures in the cliff face folded. The rocket launcher, which had presumably done for our salamander, dropping to the ground beside it. He must already have primed the warhead because it detonated inside the tube, spraying a satisfactory amount of shrapnel in all directions, which more or less halved the number of our opponents in one fell swoop. Quite literally in the case of a couple standing nearest to him. <laughs> Jürgen nodded in quiet satisfaction. Thought there'd be a frag charge. Nicely done. Nicely done, I told him. It may have been a happy accident, but he might as well get the credit, and began to think we might get out of this after all. Then a familiar bellow rippled through the air, and the orc reappeared, not dead as I hoped after all, but pretty much the worse for wear. He was limping, his whole torso pockmarked with stigmata of las weapons. One ear was missing, along with enough muscle and skin to expose the teeth along with that side of his jaw. And an ecstatic grin stretched across what was left of his face. Even by the standards of his own species, he seemed remarkably resilient, although I'd seen the like often enough before. I practically lost count of the number of orcs I encountered too stubborn or too stupid to realize they're dead, lumbering on long after they should have dropped fueled by nothing but bloodlust and rage. Kill them all, he roared, picking up his speed. His eyes fixed on Yugen and me. Now you! The bolter was still in his hand, but it seemed I'd been right about him running out of ammunition. He was brandishing it like a club, and it seemed to have acquired a... Pintia of congealed blood to which a few patches of what looked like hair, brain, and bone fragments adhered to give it a little variety. He seemed so fixated on ripping Jürgen and me to shreds that he might not have noticed the remaining hybrids if they hadn't made themselves obvious mistake of opening fire on him as he closed with us, no doubt in hope of ridding themselves of all three at once. Not all! I yelled back, keeping my aim on the other enemy with almost paternal effort at will. If I turned to face him, the hybrids would rush us, and it would be all over. Even if, by some miracle, the orc didn't finish me off first. Still them! I fired in the general direction to reinforce the point. Kill them first! 
It was tough and go. It was touch and go. I don't mind admitting it. Once an orc is carried away by bloodlust, there's practically nothing in the galaxy that will divert them from their initial target. Unless it's some idiot making themselves look like a better one. Or in this case, half a dozen idiots. Three or four last bolts impacted on him. The rest hissing by harmlessly, or expanding themselves into the corpse I was cowering behind. His head turned. He roared again, turning and breaking into a stumbling run. A barrage of last bolts tore into his chest, exposing his ribcage. But by now, he picked up too much momentum. He could probably have shoulder charged a Lehman Russ and barged it out of the way. The first hybrid to stand his ground fell in an instant, his head reduced to a gore-drenched mist by a single swing of the heavy bolter. The second and third going down an instant later on the back swing. The remaining hybrids broke and ran, affording Jürgen and me an easy target apiece. And then last went flying against a cliff face, his neck broken by a single blow from the fist the size of my head. He stood there for a moment, trying to force air into the exposed lungs, then turned slowly to face me. <sighs> Kill them all, he said. Killed them all. I agreed, shifting my stance a little, bracing for I knew what was to come. The chainsaw had hummed in my hand, and I slipped my last pistol back into its holster, ready to take the two-handed grip if I needed to. Now each other. I spoke the fateful phrase at the same moment he did, and the orc charged. To this day, I don't know how much difference the damage he already taken made. I have, after all, faced so many of his kind in hand-to-hand -hand combat that I honestly had no idea of the manber. number, and at least half of them had been completely uninjured. But in my experience, that doesn't seem to count for much. The brutes add human resilience, allowing them to shrug off injuries a man would have found instantly fatal. His charge did seem to me to be a little slower than most. However, and I sidestepped his first blow easily, the teeth of the chain blade whining and rinsing in a shower of sparks as it deflected the mass of metal in his hand. The makeshift club gouged into the shingle, raising a storm of stinging stones. I stepped back, anticipating another wild swing and hoping to open up enough distance between us for Jürgen to get off a shot without running the risk of falling. Failing me instead. But the orc followed up almost instantly, bellowing with rage, closing the gap too quickly for my aid to intervene. My boots slithered on the pebbles as I took another step backwards. The next swipe graves past my face close enough that I felt the breeze of it passing. If I let the brute continue to press his attack, I'd be dead in a handful of heartbeats. The only way to regain the initiative was to close the distance, so I stepped in under a vicious downward blow, bringing my blade up to block it and slice clean through his forearm. The mangled heavy bolter failed to the shingle, still grasped in the hand that held it, and I drove in my heart, and I drove in hard, Pulling all my weight behind, I thrust, which ripped through his ruined chest cavity and deep into his heart. The orc fell to his knees as I tore the blade free to the side of his chest. For a moment I thought he was about to say something, and his eyes dulled, and he pinched forward, crushing to the stones. I flicked the blade free of the bits of massacred orc still clinging to it and stepped back, still weary. The creature remained motionless, and at last, I sheathed the weapon, sure that he was dead. Jürgen slung his last gun and began rummaging in his collection of pouches again. Didn't know there were greenskins around here. No one did, he said. No one did. I shook my head. One of the Sun Recon teams out. Make sure there aren't any more of them. There are always more of them. Jürgen said, accurately but unhelpfully. 
He held out a thermal flask. Dinner? Most welcome, I said. I tapped the comm bead in my ear, hopefully. But, as I expected, the vox gear and the salamander seemed not to have survived our propitious descent. It seemed we'd be walking back after all. I sighed and approached the nearest dangling rope. <sighs> Looks like we're in for a strenuous afternoon. Alright, that's going to do it for another one of these videos. I'm sorry for this one taking a little bit longer than usual. Yeah, just, uh, had to take a few days off of recording and editing and all that. You know? A few more videos that I, well, recorded already, but, uh, decided not to post because I didn't like the quality of how it turned out. Which is why, uh... The few that I do have are actually going to go to the Patreon. For, uh, well, one reason or another. So if you want to see failed content that won't make it to YouTube, like bloopers and other things that should not be uh, posted for, well, quality insurance, uh, go there. If you want to see what I'm up to on random topics and things, again... There you go. Perfect place to figure out all this type of stuff and learn more about, well, who I am and so on and so forth, along with the progression of my Krieg army, which, well, thanks to the generous donations of some of my friends, is about to grow spontaneously. Alright, that's enough muttering on about... Krieg, and uh, some of my buddies. Let's carry on with the gracious donators of the channel, which help this channel grow one Patreon at a time. The ongoing Patreon supporters of the channel. Starting off with Mr. Costman123, Coco, Zach Keller Coffee, Meltdown480, Eldrick Madrid, Fortisunam, Nicholas Gurr, Lilac NPC Starbird Thompson T35 Azuth 89 Josh Shickles Angelo Nicholas And finally at the very end of the little lineup we have here we have Matas the brand new Patreon supporter Thank you each and every one of you for being ongoing Patreon supporters of the channel Again, if you want to be a Patreon support member of the channel, see bloopers and all this other stuff, join up Discord, and so on and so forth, you can in the description down below of this video. I'll be posting art and other random things on that uh, channel, so be looking out for that. And, well, seems like we'll be going back to see what's going on with Gaunt's ghost in the next video. <laughs> oh! And a little bit after that. Well, let's just say you Nightlord fans are gonna get a little treat soon. <laughs> I wonder what he's going to read. Find out? Not in the next video. The one after that. You'll find out there. All right. Stay safe out there. Have yourselves a good one. See you next time. In the next video, which should be next. Sometime soon later this week. Definitely later this week. Like, uh, in two days, maybe? Yeah. 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 I don't know what I'm doing. All right, good night. Good morning, afternoon. Should I make that my new saying? Good night, good afternoon, or good morning. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs>